Hello, and welcome to the Art of Selling Online Courses. The goal of this podcast is to share winning strategies and secret hacks from top performers in the online course industry. My name is John Ainsworth, and today's guest is Ben Deswalski. Ben is head of WOD Prep and a dedicated online CrossFit coach. Ben's passionate about helping fitness athletes of all abilities get the competitive edge and learn new skills. WOD Prep is here to help athletes from all over the world break through their sticking points, hit new PRs, and learn to RX in every workout. They want people to see what their bodies are truly capable of. But before we start learning from Ben, I want to mention our sponsor. Today's sponsor is my company, Data Driven Marketing. We help online course creators increase their online course revenue 20 to 100% through strategic funnel optimization. We help you convert more visitors to leads, leads to sales, and increase revenue per sale. We do that through a combination of email marketing, webinars, tripwire funnels, and more. Go to datadrivenmarketing.co slash calculator to find out how much more you could be making from your courses with the ideal funnel. Ben, welcome to the show. Man, that sounds awesome. I want all of that. Give that to me. <laughs> how are you doing, man? Very good, man. Thanks for coming on. So how did you get started in this whole crazy online course world? Ultimately, it came down to... I used to own a CrossFit gym and then I got married. My wife is in the U.S. military, so I have to move around with her. In that movement, I realized that running a physical location CrossFit gym was not ideal, so I sold that. And then I was like, well, what am I going to do now? I don't want a real <laughs> job. There's a couple of random connections that I had with people who were doing well selling things on the internet for their CrossFit gyms. And I think that I started pulling on that online marketing thread and it kind of unraveled a whole world of, oh, I can just teach people how to do CrossFit and just do it on the internet. And I don't need to have a, an actual physical location or anything like that which is funny now because I'm literally doing this podcast from my office because I actually backtracked. It was like, I love having an office and my yeah. own video studio. So I have like Wad Prep headquarters, which is a complete video studio gym thing. But the bottom line was I needed something that was location independent and was able to produce enough money for my wife to not get angry at me for sitting. I'm not the kind of guy to, to sit and do nothing for a very long time, but it, you know, she's a high-performing military helicopter pilot. So we have a healthy level of prodding in both directions. So I was just, I needed something location independent and started learning about internet marketing and the rest is history. For anybody listening who's not seeing the video, Ben doesn't look like the kind of person who's going to sit around and do nothing. He's like, beefcake. The guy's in good shape. I don't know. I feel kind of homeless right now. I got my beard growing out. You know, normally <laughs> I'll like shave it and I look kind of scary, but uh, I'm trying to be less scary for you today. So... You've got courses about doing different fitness movements and trying to break through. I saw you've got something about like how to get through doing pull-ups and muscle-ups, this kind of thing. How many different courses have you got? Right now we have upwards of 15, 20, depending on what you consider a full course. We have some mini courses, what we might consider our flagship courses. So I'd say somewhere in the 15 to 20 range. I, I haven't counted in, in some time, but yeah, each course that we have at least right now, each course that we have is very specific to a, a pain point that our audience, our niche would experience. So for me, and if you're not a CrossFitter, some of that verbiage that John used earlier in today's call is very confusing, right? RX and PRs and, you know, what does any of that mean? Well, inside of our, our niche, all of those things mean a lot and people really want to get better at those specific skills and movements inside of CrossFit, which is a type of fitness. So all of our courses, rather than trying to make one comprehensive, hey, here's a course about how to get better at CrossFit, we niche down even farther and say, hey, you're a CrossFitter. We're going to help you get better at, at one thing, like kipping pull-ups, for instance, which is a, a special kind of pull-up that involves all kinds of crazy movement. And it's a way to accumulate a bunch of pull-ups really quickly. And a lot of people call it cheating but we don't call it cheating in CrossFit, we call it kipping. So we have a course among many that teach you how to do kipping pull-ups. So basically we hyper-focused on the pain points and made a course to solve each individual pain point. Cool, nice. So where does the traffic come from for you guys? I know you do a bunch of stuff with videos. So is it YouTube or what's the main source for you guys? Yeah, I'd say it's a three-legged stool. 
YouTube, Instagram, Facebook. We really popped off on Facebook there for a little while, kind of like in the inception phase, you know, when we're starting 2015, 2016, I actually had a formula for creating viral videos that just kept going viral on, on Facebook. So I just kept remaking them. Luckily early on, I had a mentor, a few people that I learned from that are like, the money is in the email list. So what's good is that every piece of content that I re released, I would not tell them to like me on Facebook. I'd say, Hey, go here and download our free training guide at wadprep.com. So we're always building that email list. It started on Facebook and then from Facebook, I moved to YouTube and then eventually someone convinced me I should do Instagram, even though I still hate it. And that's kind of our, our three-legged stool, so to speak. And then we also, a few years back, started finally blogging. You know, we started writing written content. And I think thanks to whoever helped us set that up and continued efforts for SEO, you know, search engine optimization, we have made that definitely a leg of our stool as well. So now it's a four-legged stool. So blog drives traffic. YouTube is the big one that drives a ton of traffic, Facebook and Instagram. That's where we're doing a mix of videos and then also some written content. And if you add another leg to it, you're going to have to drop the whole stool thing. Cause like a five legged stool is just going to look weird. That right? would be an the most stable stool, be a heck of a stool. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's going to turn into a table or something. It's crazy that people haven't done five-legged stools already. So I love what you're saying about driving people through to the email list. And I see people miss this all the time who have got like a big YouTube audience and then they don't drive people onto their email list. And it's yeah. such a big deal. So what do you got? Have you got like cards at the end of the video? Have you got a call to action that you're saying it in the video? Have yep. you got links yeah. in the pin notes? Like what, how do you do it? All of the above. We have all of the above. But I'd say the most valuable one, in my opinion, is just when you have a captive audience, you can run ads, you know, and I'm using ads in air quotes, you can run ads within your own video. So I'll start off a lot of my videos. Hey, what's up? It's Ben from Wild Prep. Today, I'm going to talk about how to do pull-ups. We'll keep this pull-up analogy or thread going, but hey, I'm going to teach you how to do kipping pull-ups. If you've been struggling with that, I'm going to teach you three tips that are going to instantly transform your pull-ups, but... If you want my complete ultimate guide to pull-ups, just go to wadprep.com slash pull-ups and download it for free. The link will be in the comments and in the description below, right? Like I've said that a million times, obviously. What we do is we've created a lead magnet that's congruent with that piece of content. And the whole purpose of us making YouTube videos is to get people on our email list. I wouldn't do anything. <laughs> if there was some button I could just click all day to drive people to my email list that were qualified leads and yeah. customers, I would do that. But instead I have to make videos on YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram. I do love the teaching aspect, but every piece of content we release almost to a fault is specifically designed to drive people to our website, to download a lead magnet to get them on our email list, because that's where we make our sales. I very, very rarely try to drive sales directly from a YouTube video, and especially yeah. like Facebook and Instagram. It's like people are, are there to be distracted on YouTube. They're at least there to learn something a lot of times, maybe be distracted or watch, you know, conspiracy theories, but at least on Instagram and Facebook, they're to, there for distraction. So yeah. trying to get them to pull out their credit card and buy something, especially a, a high end coaching course is it's kind of futile. Yeah. So it's always, Hey, let's get them on our email list. And then when they're on our email list, we build our clout and expertise. We're sharing lots of good free coaching with them. All we're doing is serving them. And then, you know, we'll go through a launch with some sort of limited time offer. So the money's in the email list. So every piece of content is all about driving people to the email list. And then one of the biggest things, and John, I know that you probably do something similar. Is like, it's not like I'm in these videos saying, Hey, if you want to join the wad prep newsletter, go to wadprep.com, right? <laughs> Guess how many people want to join the wad prep newsletter? Three, my grandmother, my mom, and my dad, maybe my wife, but probably not. But like, those are the only three people that want to join the wad prep newsletter. So I'm giving them a reason to yeah. join the email list. So if you want the ultimate guide to pull-ups, go to wadprep.com slash pull-ups and I'll send it to you for free. Now it's not about me. It's about you the listener, the customer, or the potential customer. So that's a huge thing that a ton of people miss is they think that just having a call to action is good enough when really it's not. You need to have something that's congruent and something that people would actually want to get. 
Yeah. For people who've got traffic coming in mostly from Google to the site, it's different because you're going in from YouTube, but most people, if they have a newsletter as the sign up, will tend to get about a 0.5% opt-in rate. So about 0.5% of the website visitors will sign up. And that's even if they're sticking it everywhere and it's a pop-up and all that kind of thing. And if you start to do some clever stuff with some really good lead magnets that fit, that are appropriate based on whatever blog post someone's on, you get the right kind of um, lead magnet, you can start to get up to, well, the highest we've ever got to is 8.5%, but like most people can get to about 5%, but you're not going to get there with a the newsletter. There's no way. Back in the early days, I know this is going to sound insane, but back in the early days of our business, we were getting upwards of 30% because we were like the only people doing it. And we didn't have Google, we didn't have random traffic. We had people who were hanging on my every word and then I'd send them to our website and they would opt in like crazy. I remember actually showing my friend who works for Thrive Themes, she logged into the back end of our website and was like, something's broken. <laughs> and then she looked at the data and she's like, oh my God, these are the highest opt-in numbers I've ever seen in my life. Yeah. Can we use you as a case study? <laughs> uh, and I just thought it was hilarious because it all depends on your industry and your market. But luckily yeah. for me, I have a very obsessed audience that really loves to, to learn about what we're doing. But yeah, if I was like, join the WOD Prep newsletter, yeah, half a percent, maybe a percentage point or two, but... It really helps when you actually give them something juicy and something that they want. Let's have a little look at your site here. So I go here. So I've gone to the slash pull-ups page. And if I go sure. to the pull-ups to sign up here, what's going to happen now? I sign up. That's a great What's question. Next? Okay. So I've been taken to, it says the free trainings on the way to my inbox. Check out this video from coach Ben with a special bonus for you. Nice. Okay. Ready to ditch band to pull up. So what am I going to get here? It's got 30 minutes on the countdown time. You better right? hurry up and join and buy that course. <laughs> so here we go. I'm getting 30% off. So instead of 197 bucks, it's $118. Do you have any idea on the conversion rate on this page? How many people are buying who get here? I do not off the top of okay. my head. But across, we have lots of these. We have yeah. lots of lead magnets that drive people to a thank you page. Right now, if you opted in, you're going to get a really nice pull up guide. It's not like a bait and switch here. You actually get a really, really nice mini course that I probably could yeah. charge money for. But what we realized is that we just had so many people landing on our thank you pages. So about a year ago, maybe a little less than a year ago, I actually implemented like, Hey, let's make an offer. Like, yeah. Let's make a limited time offer to new subscribers. It hasn't been a crazy transformation in our bottom line, but we get a couple sales a day. I think actually Brent, my main data guy, messaged us and said, guys, we finally sold like six or seven of these in one day. So that's, it's seven, 800 bucks worth of revenue just created kind of out of thin air without us mm. doing anything different other than making the thank you place a, a place where people can buy something. And about how many email subscribers are you getting a day or a month, whatever number you might know? Again, I, I'm kind of feel bad because this is just going to show my ignorance on the numbers. These are all things that a year, two years ago, I was on top of, I knew them all, but lately I've been pulling back on me understanding the data completely. But I think as a general rule, we get anywhere from a thousand to 1500 email subscribers in a given month. This upcoming month, there's a big online competition. It'll probably be 15,000 new email subscribers. But anywhere from a thousand to fifteen hundred per month, and actually, you know, now that I think about it, one of the team's KPIs is no days below ninety, right? So like ninety okay. email subscribers is about the average daily, and I think we've been bumping up that up recently. Maybe it's like three thousand in a month, something like that. Okay, cool. Yeah, I can actually check. So that's three thousand a month. So maybe the thousand to fifteen hundred that I'm thinking of is net gain. So that's also including unsubs. I can actually, if I can pull open, uh, we have a spreadsheet that automatically updates and kind of floats around with the daily opt-in numbers. I'll pull it up while we talk. Cool. So it sounds like from those numbers that you mentioned in terms of having like six or seven one day, that that page is converting pretty well. And that's interesting because normally this is like a tripwire page here. Normally we're finding on that kind of page that you're going to get a good conversion rate if you've got something about the kind of 20, 30, 40 bucks range. And you've got here 118. So that's really nice that that converts well. I really like that. Right. But it probably would help us, honestly, if we did reduce the price. It was basically rather than create a new asset for it, we're like, all right, what can we do with assets that we already have? Yeah. All right. All of our courses are like the $200 range. Let's just do a discount for the course yeah. rather than make something new. And I'm, Pulling up 
All right, here we go. I have all the stats. All these questions you're asking me, I actually have a nice little dashboard for. I just need to figure cool. out how to, how to use it. It's been a while. Jeez, Ben. So welcome page views. All right, it looks like on any given day, 100 to 200 thank you page visits on any given day. And then we'll have anywhere from zero to, like I said, we had six a couple days ago purchase off of that traffic. What does it look like? It's kind of an average on that one. Traffic on, on what? On traffic or purchase? On sales. Sales of that uh, course on the thank you page. Basically the average I'm looking at is probably one to two a day. Six was kind of like a bit of an outlier. Okay. Like I see a three, I see a few zeros, a one, a three, a two, a six. So between one and two on a given day. Cool. And you're right. It's probably a price point thing. I was more of like, let's get something up there rather than nothing at all. And then I'm actually looking at leads. So lately due to our traffic efforts, it looks like our leads are, are coming in anywhere from 50 to 200 new leads a day. And that, you know, largely depends on new content drops and, you know, things like that. Gotcha. And then I was going to ask you what happens next, but I'm going to pull this up and uh, have a look with you as well. And what I love is you get to the, if you click on the button to add it to the cart, you're also getting an order bump, which is yes. great. Lots of people do not have order bumps. Generally, we find about 60 to 70% of people will add the order bump. We have this exact bump on, I think, almost every single cart. I think in terms of our thank you page funnels, you know, lead magnet page, and then you click through. I think every single one of those, we, we have the order bump on it. Because I remember we ran a launch, a live launch with an order bump. And I don't think we got quite that high of a conversion, but it was for us, our, our upsells and cross sells and things tend to not do that well. And then we added a bump offer for again, like $19. And it was something like 38% of people clicked yes to it. And we were like, holy cow, this is amazing. So now it's implemented across the board almost entirely. Nice, nice. So you mentioned that sells there. So if somebody goes ahead and buys, what happens next? You better buy it, man. Yeah, you're going to have to see. <laughs> <laughs> Time is running out. Do you not feel anxious about this? What are you doing on this call, man? <laughs> Credit card details in. Go for it. So is there an upsell on the next page? Or I don't know on that particular one, but do you normally have upsells? Yes, we have upsells across the board. Again, it was one of those things where have they been fully optimized and perfected? Probably not. But yeah. merely implementing is the biggest step and hurdle for us sometimes. So case in point on this, on these thank you pages, it used to just be like, okay, go check your email inbox and like us on Facebook, you know, or something like that. And then I had a mentor who was like, Hey, you need to put an offer here. They're really hot right now for you. You should probably make them an offer. And yeah. we did. Our numbers are decent. They could be better, but over the course of a year, we're producing tens, probably 10,000 or more dollars that otherwise wouldn't have been produced most likely. So the same thing goes for upsells. With our upsells, traditionally, a lot of them were just simply cross sells. So you buy the Kipping pull-up course, and then our upsells are going to be like, hey, do you want the course on jumping rope? Or hey, do you want the course on increasing your shoulder mobility? So yeah. not necessarily the same. They're not necessarily associated with that movement, but they're the same sport, you know? So I would call it more of a cross sell than an upsell. And our conversion rates are pretty terrible on those, to be quite honest with you. But we did see, again, it's just like the rule of, of it's like odds, right? It's data. You take it and implement it across the board. And all of a sudden, every day or so, we're getting an upsell. We're getting an upsell here, an upsell there. And now we've actually started testing. Our upsell, generally speaking, is to a membership that we have. We have like a coaching group where we give all a lot of really good coaching advice. It's like a tight knit community. What we've tried to do is create a CrossFit gym online and that's our upsell now. And we offer, whether it's like a free trial or a discount, we're not necessarily trying to make lots of money immediately on the upsell, mm. but we kind of make it off the tail end once people decide that they love it and they want to stick around. So that's a big one. And then another thing I will say on upsells, just because we're on the topic is the best upsell I've ever made without even any close second is selling them more of the same thing they've already bought. And here's what we do. When you join our membership site for $40 or $39 a month is what you join it. 
$39 a month times 12 is $468. So we'll offer, hey, you just joined Wild Prep Masters. Great decision. You're going to love it. But on this page only, if you'd like, you can upgrade to a yearly membership instead of a monthly membership and save, you know, an atrocious amount of money, like save a ton of money. And what we're doing there is we're upgrading that customer lifetime value, or at least the order value from 39 or, you know, our monthly average for people is in that like three to four month range. We're taking that customer lifetime value and immediately bumping it up. Hmm. So we actually offer buy the entire year upfront for $300 per year. And we're going to send you an exclusive t-shirt. Boom. 65% yes rate on that, which is why we should probably increase the price because it's clearly too high. But I remember the first launch that we ran that specific upsell. I was like, what have we done? Like we found the perfect upsell. And sure enough, I think it's just that idea. And I know e-commerce run into this a lot of times. It's just like sell them more of what they've already made a decision that they want. Don't try to sell them and make them have a decision on something else. Just say, Hey, you just bought this. Want some more of it for a better price here. And it, it worked extremely well for us. It's nice. It's the guys in the supplement industry tend to do that always exactly the same. Do you bought one yeah. bottle? Would you like three bottles? You bought three bottles. Do you want seven? It's always one, three, seven, because that's what works. I watched uh, Perry Belcher, one of the guys from digital marketer, give a talk once about it. He's like, just always sell them more. He's like, we sold people t-shirts and on the thank you page, we sold them three t-shirts. And on the thank you page of that, we tried selling them hoodies. No, don't sell them hoodies. That's dangerously far away from t-shirts. Sell them more t-shirts. <laughs> sell them the exact same t-shirt again. <laughs> <laughs> I made someone the other day, $10,000 a month with that one piece of advice. It was just like, just put an upsell on the thank you page and offer them more of what they've got. And they're like, dude, I'm making an extra 10 grand a month. I'm like, buy me a beer, you know, <laughs> do something nice, plant some trees, you know, go for it, man. Yeah. It's incredible. What just the positioning of an upsell. I wouldn't have believed you if you told me that almost right. until right. I've seen it firsthand for three, four years, we had been making upsells on every single thing we sold with abysmal rates. You know, we're talking like five to maybe on the high end, 15% upsell right. conversion. And then again, this one launch, the upsell, I think we started at $200 and then went to 250 and now we're at $300. Like it's a pretty big chunk of change compared to what they just bought. But because we're offering them more of the same thing at a better deal and a t-shirt, there's also a t-shirt thing clearly, <laughs> the thread here. man, it works incredibly well. So don't underestimate the value of, of truly honing in on what that upsell should be. Nice. I love that. That is amazing. All right. So you've got 15 to 20 courses, you've got upsells, you've got order bumps, you've got tons of traffic coming in. What kind of revenue are you guys doing now a year with that? Yeah, we've been steadily growing every year. I think last year we were right around three quarters of a million. And I think this year with, you know, again, just continuing to focus on the customer, we're really driving our, our memberships over individual courses. That's kind of like a move that takes a little while to ramp up, but we're starting to see that it's kind of the clear winner for us mm -hmm. um, is to just sell someone once on something that they love and then just do a really good job of serving that customer. And they're not going to leave. They're going to keep mm -hmm. paying every month or, or every year if they take our upsell or every quarter if they take our downsell. And we just keep serving that customer. And our goal is to just find more of those types of people. So I think we're going to do seven figures this year. And what's great is that, you know, it's a very profitable business. We have a big team. So I pay, pay a lot of people to do a lot of awesome work and they do a great job with it. That's like, it's a million dollar. I don't necessarily know exactly what the profit would be on, on a million dollars or three quarter mil last year, but it's real money. It's not, I'm paying a dollar for Facebook ads and making a dollar back and calling it a million dollar business, right? That's the next step is I do want to actually dip into paid traffic, which we do very little. Almost everything we do is organic. So I'm excited to kind of add some fuel to the fire with more paid traffic funnels to scale to a million and, and beyond. I mean, I think we definitely have the potential to make it a few million dollar business with just, you know, turning the right levers and building the right system so that it can scale. And it's not weighing on my shoulders or weighing on any one coach's shoulders. And I think we're in a great position to do that. Sweet. Dude, that sounds awesome.
how many email promotions are you tending to run? You mentioned that you do promotion, you do a bit of a discount, but you move into the membership. How many promotions are you doing a month on average, do you reckon? Honestly, it varies. And the answer is like, we should do more because mm. they always go well. I'd say on average, we are running some sort of campaign or promotion or, or launching a brand new course 1.5 times a month. <laughs> so like it's, I wouldn't say it's quite two times a month, but it's probably like 1.5 times a month It's a little bit more than 12 times a year will we run like a full blown kind of like entire email list launch. Sometimes we do some segmentation. Sometimes we won't sell things for quite some time to build up for like a massive brand new course launch. So it really depends. And, and honestly, there's not enough science there. It's just like vibes from me and the team. Like, what do we feel like we want to do? Let's do that. So we're trying to systemize that a little bit more and, and increase the frequency of promotions, because I think that's kind of really where you win is if you can run launches that don't completely exhaust your list, but they also provide value and you're able to do them more frequently. Like Ramit Sethi is a guy that comes to mind. I've learned a ton from him. And I mean, he's, if you're on his email list, like I am in a couple different places, He's launching something every week, man, but his launches have really good content that people want right. to read. So as long as you're not the guy that's just straight up all caps, spamming your, <laughs> buy my thing now, right? Unless you have a crazy amount of lead flow coming in, we kind of play the long game where it's like, Hey, when they're on our email list, we understand they might not buy for a few mm. months or a year. We, you know, we've had people who've been on our email list for a really long time, and then they finally convert once the right offer comes across their email. What we've seen is that no one email promotion that we've, like, and I've seen a lot, I've never seen one go over 1% of the email list converting, whatever the price mm -hmm. point, whatever the promotion, however good the campaign is, virtually all of them are about 0.1 to 0.7% of the email list will buy. But that stays pretty much the same if you do one email promotion a month, two email promotions a month or four. So like, mm. that's one of the biggest levers, like from what you're saying that I would say, if you do two email promotions a month, four email promotions a month, that you are going to see like a big step up. We've got a client, she went from doing one email promotion a month to two and went from 10 grand a month to 20. And it was like, that was the change, right. but it's like, it, it, you might worry the email list is going to get exhausted and they'll unsubscribe and they're going to get pissed off and they're going to stop. But if you do it, like you're saying, if you make the emails valuable in themselves, right. you're golden, you know, the whole thing yeah. works beautifully. Nice. Yeah. I mean, that is our strategy for this year. I have a new operations manager that's come in and has just been outstanding helping with, with so many different things. And that's like one of the takeaways is like, Hey, let's turn up the dial a little bit on these promotions, especially when we combine that with making some of our promotions membership based, the, the revenue spike is, is going to be pretty tremendous. So yeah, it's definitely good advice. And yeah. early on, I will admit, like we had some pretty high conversion rates early on, like we're talking like two to 3% of the list, but as the list has grown, now we're definitely squarely in that. 0.1 to 0.7%. I mean, frankly, if anything converts anywhere near 0.5%, like we're talking a hundred K launch for us, uh, which is huge. So yeah, that's, that's good math. Sweet. What things did you have to change along the way? As you got to 5k, 10k, 20k a month, different points along the way, what was it like, when was it that you first hired a team? What was any other kind of milestones for you? You know, with regard to the team, I was very. I guess, apprehensive or hesitant hiring anyone for a little while. Cause like, right. no one can do it like I do. Oh, how I was wrong. <laughs> one of my mentors told me, like I was complaining to him back in the day. I was like, man, I spent all day editing this video it was so hard and I have to do it again tomorrow. And he's just like, Hey Ben, are you a video editor? Like, do you want to do that for the rest of your life? And I was like, no. He's like, then by our next meeting, you need to hire someone <laughs> or I'm, I'm firing you as a client. And I'm like, what? And then of course, like I went out to hire this person. So I, I like put out some feelers, found someone who's actually living on the military base with me, sent her the video. She wasn't a CrossFitter though. So she wasn't going to understand it. And I was just like, had all these limiting beliefs. Like there's no way they're going to be able to do it like I can. And then sure enough, you know, she sent me back the first project and I was like, see, I know it. this is terrible. You know, 
I'll send back some suggestions, but like I said, I need to edit all these videos. This isn't anywhere near what I could have done. And then she sends me back the second version and it was like blew my mind. Like it was like 10 times better than any video I'd ever produced. <laughs> and I was like, well, I guess I'll just swallow my words and, and move on. So that would like started, I wouldn't call it a hiring spree, but that was the lesson that I needed to learn on my own that, Hey, there are people even who aren't active CrossFitters in your industry that can come into your business and make your life easier so that you can focus more on what you're good at. And then slowly but surely that has expanded from, you know, me and that video editor to now it's a team of 12 of us, I think in various capacities, coaches and contractors and stuff like that. And on call, probably 15 people can come and, and help us with various projects. And, th and that's helped me be able to just keep focusing on what I'm good at and outsource all the rest which obviously one of those is data <laughs> for me, that kind of stuff bogs me down. And I just trust that my team will, yeah. if they're the ones staying on top of the data and I'm the one that's like asking, Hey, what can we do to change the data? And, mm. and that's where my job comes in. The idea guy, if you will. Nice. I love it. Well, dude, I really appreciate your time on that. That's been awesome. You're clearly doing a damn load of things, right? This is really exciting. I look forward to seeing you at an event and hearing when you've made a million, that should be fun. If people want to check out your courses, where should they go? What's the website? Just go to wadprep.com. Like I said, if you just go there, we have a ton of free training stuff. If you want to get any free training from us, that's a great place to start. There is a tab on our website that says courses, and that's where you can check out like a few of our sales pages and various funnels. You can funnel hack us, whatever, do your thing. And then if you want to see the funnel from top to bottom, just go to any of our social media accounts. So YouTube dot com slash wad prep, Instagram, wad prep, Facebook, wad prep. It's all the same. And then you can kind of backtrack uh, any decent marketer will be able to see the funnel that we've got going on. And if you are a CrossFitter, then you should join all of our courses or join wad prep masters because we will help you get better at CrossFit. I said that one before. Oh yeah. Oh, I don't want to bore everyone. And actually, so here's one I have to, I have to say this, and I think this is probably my most exciting project that Maybe I shouldn't give it away, but I'm kind of an open book, but like our next big venture is I want to move one layer outside of my niche. So I don't want to just help CrossFitters get better at CrossFit. I want to help people like you, John, and people like anyone listening to this, who's like CrossFit seems intense. That's not for me, or that's kind of scary, or I'm not fit enough to do that. I want to break that barrier down. Because my aunts and uncles who are 60, 65, I got one uncle knocking on 70. They all do CrossFit five times a week and absolutely love it. And they're relatively pain and injury free. Uh, and it's the only thing that gets them to work out consistently. And that's because CrossFit can be really fun if you have the right coaching and you understand how to approach it properly. So eventually build the business so that we're breaking down those barriers and helping more people fall in love with fitness. Because we believe that when people fall in love with fitness their whole lives change for the better, mentally, physically, emotionally. So that's the goal. That's like the end goal is to, to introduce more people to this thing called functional fitness or CrossFit. Sweet, dude. Well, thanks so much today. If you found this interview useful, please give us a review wherever you listen to it and come join us on Facebook. We've got the advanced online course creators group on Facebook. You get early access to these interviews, you get to see the video versions of it, and you get support with growing your online course sales. So come join us there, and I will see you guys awesome. next I'm gonna time. I'm going to join. See you, everybody.